Hey everybody, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Brandon Anderson, I work for Tectonic Theater Project uh, in New York, and I've been here with these amazing students for a week and a half, and then a week and a half prior to that, where we've been exploring moment work, which is our devising technique of how to create theater uh, in a space together. Uh, so over this last week and a half, we've been exploring a source material as a full group, creating what we call moments, where we explore the different elements of the stage, like lights, props, costumes, sets, and how they all communicate individually, and thinking about how do you start putting together a piece where text is not supreme, where you don't start with the script and then everything else dresses it up, but all the elements of the stage are working together to start telling a story and then coming together to create a narrative using these elements. And so they've been doing a ton of amazing work. And so we're ready to share about 20 minutes of our process with you, about 20 minutes of this piece we've been exploring. Um, it's still obviously in process. You might see people with scripts. You might see people, you know, you're going to see uh, very... <laughs> rudimentary tech elements happening. We, we do not, we are not visible over here, just so you're not aware. Um, but we hope you enjoy uh, this piece that we've been exploring, uh, 20 minutes of this piece. So thank you for being here. We begin. until the power comes back on, yeah? Yeah. All right. I'm glad that you are here with me. Me too. You, you want to play these? Yeah. <laughs> as long as you play them correctly. Today, the German troops are marching into abandoned Paris. It also said France's vital seaport of Le Havre had fallen and that Montmédy, northern anchor of France's Maginot Line, had been conquered. Line. I want to hear tanks, this. tanks, their nose guns, ominously dominating the streets, led the advance into the city that last felt the threat of Prussian boots almost 70 years ago after Bismarck's triumph in the War of 1870. War of 1870. Colonel, what is this old stuff? This is like ancient history wartime stuff. I mean, it's like not like anyone was there to remember, anyway. I was there! Colonel, what? Why have you never told me? This is David Daniels from the Washington Post. I wanted to ask you a few questions about your work as a spy with the Druid Network in the World War II resistance. Can you please tell us what it was like to socialize with the Germans? I teased them. All right, can you elaborate on that at all? I taunted them. Okay. 
Well, what about telling us how it felt to realize what you were looking at when you saw the plans for the V2 rockets? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Would you be able to describe what it was like to be in a concentration camp for so long? No, 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 no. All right, but Jeannie, if you're not going to tell your story, who is? trying on my new shoes. Ah, and do you like them? <laughs> I love them. They're very grown up. Let's play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Papa, you are so serious. Play the game. It's only a game. No, but play it correctly. are being destroyed. We must collaborate with the Germans so that we can survive, so they don't invade our town. Collaborate with the Germans? But they're monsters. We must fight. We must resist. No. And you're going to play their game. In fact, I have volunteered you to translate for the Germans. You will Report to the German Army Command Office in town in the morning. Immediately. You did what? Papa, I can't. I can't. No, you must. You must, Jeannie, and you play the game. Yes, Papa. Jeannie. Is it true that you ran into an old friend, Georges Lamar, founder, founder of the Druids, on a train from Paris to Vichy? Was he the one who convinced you to gather intelligence for the resistance? What's the point of knowing all this if I don't share it? Resist. Resistance is a state of mind. You can exercise it at any moment.
believe you. <laughs> Play the game. to the colonel. Oh, oh dear. Oh my. Oh, what is it? Oh, that is a rocket, miss. A rocket? <laughs> oh, I don't believe you. And these are the plans? Oh my. Well, it, it is an impressive rocket. <coughs> uh, I think you should be delivering that to the colonel. This said that these were plans for a rocket. I don't believe it. <laughs> what kind of a rocket? No, it's a V2 rocket. Uh -huh. It's unstoppable. Arrives without warning, travels at supersonic speeds. <laughs> what you're saying cannot be true. What do these numbers mean? Uh, these numbers here are the distance calculations. Oh. oh, and what are these numbers? Yes, those are the coordinates for the launch site, but you don't need to worry your pretty little head about it. <laughs> Is it launching soon? Any day now that we have these plans. Uh, I've seen what I need. You can bring these plans back to the lieutenant. Uh, yes, Colonel. Good afternoon. This is the game. survive. Why wouldn't you want to tell your story? I told them. I needed to protect you. But Grandma, why would you want to forget? Some things are just worth forgetting.
Jeannie, can you tell us what it was like to be in a concentration camp? Jeannie, is it true that you were sent to a concentration camp, then onto a labor camp where you remained for 12 months? Grandma? Is it true that you refused to work invoking your rights under the Geneva Convention? Grandma? Was it months before the camp would be freed and several women died as a result? A fellow prisoner, Lulu Lepore's, was quoted saying about you, she was unusual, impulsive. Of course, it is all very well to have courage, but you must know how to use it. Grandma, where are you? that Franklin D. Roosevelt had lived to witness this day. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe.
thank you so much for being here. Uh, we do like to usually just, if you want, if you need to leave, you can. I uh, would ask like a few just questions to, from the audience. It's a very slow in process. So I would love to hear things that struck you, moments that struck you as very interesting or exciting, and any questions that you might have. So something that either that struck you or a question that maybe this has left you with. But if you need to run, please do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's cool if you don't. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to leave it open if people had something they wanted to share that struck something that's really yeah. struck them or a question that they just brought up for you. Yeah. Um, uh, what element did you guys find first in the creation process for it? Was it lighting, sound? Uh, were you given a prompt? The source material was the obituary uh, for Jeannie Rousseau. Okay. And that was provided by Brandon. Mm -hmm. um, but the answer to the elements question is we sort of, we had, there was level one where we sort of had to just create moments of usually like 30 seconds where we had like an I begin and then the moment we filled like a fun thing that we discovered about like the lamp and the way it could like light up the room and then that was the first moments we made of discovery of these like beautiful moments and then we got source material and then we started like, okay, how do we use all of these different elements to do that and text was the last thing that we actually created the text out of like parts of obituary or facts that some of us researched so there was no script. We took that away. That's a big thing with tectonic. You take it away and then you create those moments and then you find ways to merge them with the other elements and bring them back to be able to have a full story. I think one of the first big things was heartbeat heels. Um, Heartbeat heels. Was the, the red light and the sound of the heartbeat and the high heels mm -hmm. really were sort of one of the first big terminating impulses. So it was sort of light and sound and costume really kind of got the ball run in a way. And I love the way the light was also under the, the blue cube of light and the little bright, like, changing light on the rocket was really exciting. Yeah, all these colored lights in conversation with each other felt great to me. Um. Uh, yeah, I was really <laughs> struck by the use of the space when you said the blue mm -hmm. light. Like, just seeing that space used was really exciting to me. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just having the choice to have it staged on an angle like this, um, I thought was really... Mm -hmm like kept my brain tingling. Um, yeah. yeah, and with that, I like just have a question about like how, so you like like learned all of these different like ways of working and then how did this come together as a group and how did you choose to stage it like this and what was that conversation like? Mm -hmm. okay. So if you imagine like a bunch of different pieces that are all somewhere in the story, what we did when we probably had 20, 25 of these moments, we just started combining them together, basically, not randomly, but like strategically. Sequences. And when we found sequences that worked together and were strong, we started like building up more of them. So it's very much like a puzzle piece where you have all these individual things and then you try them and play with them in different things and they come together. I think another oh, piece okay. of that too was where we had a lot of discussions about the organizing principle. So mm -hmm. it was, you know, we, were, the question was asked of all of us, you know, what is, what was the story? What were we interested in? What were the moments we, we were creating, showing us, was the thing that we were interested in? You know, it's like the things we kept being drawn to, mm -hmm. um, to tell the story, like, you know, the, and this, so we have names for all these moments. The granny under the stairs <laughs> was that, that moment. And we kept being drawn to the granny under the stairs. And it was like, that is obviously we are wondering about where, you know, Jeannie's life after spy life and how did that happen. So I think that that was the organizing principle. And we had to keep asking that question too of like, okay, does this serve what we need on is what this piece is about for us. As you go in the Your question and observation about space, if I'm not 
I'm going to recall it correctly. I think that was our first lesson with Brandon. So in order to even come out with that space, what he did was allow us to just take in the room, and then we had to find, like, we got partnered up and pretty much found a space, something that was interesting to us, and then we did a thing there. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of embodying the room, and that brought me back to, like, day one um, about that. You did it by yourself, and then you did it with, and we built on that. So that, mm -hmm. it's like each day we focus on how do we use this space here, how do we add light to this. So it was like a building block, but knowing what we wanted to do towards the end was like maybe the first and second levels and now it's like making those things just kind of place. So it sounds like a lot, which it is. We we work hard like in one day. We have a lot of butcher food. Yeah, we like have to write everything down. So Yeah, and what were your I'm just curious, like working in a big group like this, like what the conversations were like and like how mm -hmm. just like working through like disagreements or like mm -hmm. different like, yeah, like how that works for all the <laughs> Sure. I think if, when we didn't agree, we just tried the things both ways, and it became pretty obvious quickly what was effective and what wasn't. So it, there wasn't a whole lot of arguing, really. It was just like, okay, that's your opinion. This is my opinion. Let's see what it looks like. Cool. The ultimate arbiter was when you finally came up with a distinct organizing principle. Right, it was really great to basically say which of these moments helped us tell that story. Right, the right. strongest. That was the thing. Yeah, because I had a, I had a challenge with that, and if Frank was like, everybody, there's no right or wrong. So once I got in that, there's no right or wrong. But one person's point, his thing was, okay, we saw that four different ways, and then we had to come up agreeably with each other, like which is the strongest moment, and seeing that, you know. It may not be the moment that you actually came up with, which was a great moment in its time, but not for that organizing principle. So that was one of the toughest lessons for me. And there is a lot of work on the individual artist part of just, you know, like ego work of like the wise brain saying, am I just emotionally attached to this? Or like, you have to be like rational and like, just sort of be aware of everyone else's energy in the room so that, because I believe if we're all working you know, you don't want to fight, and we gotta be empathetic. Also, we're very fortunate to be seven people who know each other for a while. Hmm. Can you repeat or say what was the organizing principle that you came up with? Oh, I don't know. It's on the bottom, it's on the bottom of that it. second, the qu it's on the bottom, bottom kind of the next one down, that bottom question there. What is the weight of being a hero and carrying the responsibility of your story, personal mm -hmm. versus public? Well, I wanted to mention that I loved that the hero was imperfect and that she, like, didn't even care for her own well-being in a way. Like, I mean, I love that, but I loved that, like, you expect the hero to be, like, not being irrational in prison, you know, like, being, like, zen and, like, waiting for it out, or, you know, but, like... I don't know, that I thought was a really interesting detail. I don't know if you got that out of the obituary, if you just kind of invented that. I think it's, we, we are playing a lot, and it didn't, the words sit out there, but we are very aware of and thinking of the post-traumatic post stress disorder that she um, faced from just being in these moments. Right. Uh, we also had some moments that were like, seeing how that affected her in her like normal life where you have to have yeah, but we definitely, there were, there were different, we went through a process to get to one final organizing principle, but we were talking about heroism, heroism and like, what is it, who becomes one, but that also there were so many people were harmed by the work that she did, or by her behavior in, in the camps, like, she's this hero, but, you know, the, we, you know, you could tell like a fancy, splashy spy story, like James Bond, but we, you know, obviously it was more, and we, and, you know, there's words that came out of that that you know not a hero yeah. and an interesting detail of her story is that she didn't actually tell the story until 2008 mm -hmm. so she kept that all a secret everything she did until very close to the end of her life uh, so another element that I think you guys were really successful with was the use of your shadows and colors of the lighting of it really presented a um, realistic and realism of when we were seeing her in the present as well as the 